Shalom. Welcome back. Welcome back. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning at verse 1, all the way down to verse 33. You got your Bibles? All right, let's begin. Verse 1. Would to God ye, would, ye could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. The Apostle Paul is ministering to the Corinthians. The Apostle Paul is a disciple of Jesus Christ. He was on the road to Damascus. He was persecuting the church. <laughs> and Jesus stopped him dead in his track and said, Why are you persecuting me? He said, Who are you, Lord? Jesus said, I'm Jesus who you persecute. It's hard for you to kick against the pricks. So go into uh, Damascus on a street called Straight, and I'll tell you what you need to do. So from that moment, his life was changed. He stopped persecuting the church, and he became part of the church. The church is Israel. The church is Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham. They're Israelites. That's the church, Israel. Israel is the body of Christ. Paul is a disciple of Jesus Christ. He's a Hebrew Israelite. He's of the tribe of Benjamin, of the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. Israel was divided into two kingdoms when Solomon sinned. The northern kingdom was ten tribes, and the southern kingdom was Judah and Benjamin. Solomon was part of the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. Jesus is part of the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. Jesus is a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Judah. These are things you need to know and understand when you're studying the scriptures. The ten tribes in the northern kingdom sinned against the Lord. When they sinned against the Lord, the Lord scattered them among the Gentiles. The Gentiles are mentioned in Genesis chapter 10. The Japheth Gentile. Noah had three sons. Japheth, Ham, and Shem. Only Japheth is listed as having Gentiles. Ham doesn't have Gentiles, nor does Shem have Gentiles. Only Japheth. So Jesus said uh, in a scripture that you shall be led away captive into all nations. He was talking about the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. You'll be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem will be trotting down of the Gentiles. And so he was talking about the Japheth Gentiles. See, when Jesus was doing his earthly ministry, Israel was under occupation by Rome. And so it, uh, Rome is the Japheth Gentile. They was ruling then, and they're still ruling now. So to finish off what Jesus was saying, he said that Jerusalem will be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Well, these are the times of the Gentiles even today. And they won't be fulfilled until the Lord Jesus comes back. So he's not coming back for the Jephet Gentiles. He's coming back for Israel. So the ten tribes of Israel sinned against the Lord. And the Lord scattered them among the Gentiles. And so when the Lord called Paul to preach to, to the Gentiles, that's who Paul is preaching to, the northern kingdom of Israel of the ten tribes that are scattered. But your 501c3 corporations, pastors, preachers, and teachers of the Antichrist church system, they will tell you that Paul is preaching to everybody else that's not Israel. That's not true. They take the scriptures out of context and they deceive the people. They're deceived themselves. <laughs> Jesus didn't come to start a religion. He didn't come to start Christianity or Catholicism. The, the Romans, the Japheth Gentiles wanted to get in on it. They started Christianity and said it's for everybody. It's not for everybody. It's just for Israel. So Paul is preaching to Hebrew Israelites that are scattered in Corinth. 
This is what you need to understand when you take re reading and studying the scriptures because you have to keep the scriptures in context. So he's writing this epistle to the Corinthians who are Hebrew Israelites of the northern kingdom of the ten tribes that were scattered. And also to some of the uh, southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin they may, that may be in that area. He said, Would to God ye could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. Verse 2, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So who is he talking about and who is he talking to? He's talking to the uh, ten tribes of the northern kingdom of Israel that's scattered amongst the Corinthians. They're, they're no longer referred to as Israel or Ephraim. They are referred to as Gentiles or uncircumcised or whatever location where they're living. And so that's who he's talking to. But your 501c3 corporations, pastors, preachers, and teachers of the Antichrist church system, they would tell you that Paul is talking to the Gentiles, everybody that's not Israelite. That's not true. He's talking to Israelites, again, of the northern kingdom of the ten tribes that are scattered. He said, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So the northern kingdom of Israel was receiving the word. They were referred to as Gentiles. They're not the Japhet Gentiles, but they were just referred to as Gentiles because they were scattered among the Gentiles. Verse 3, But I fear, least by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his Subtility, sub, subtility, so your mind should be corrupt from the simplicity that is in Christ. So he was warning them. He like, I don't want you guys to be beguiled or deceived like Eve was beguiled or deceived by the serpent. Uh, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that's in Christ. Because as Paul was ministering and preaching unto them, the southern kingdom of Judah was kind of going against what Paul was saying to them and telling them, y'all need to get circumcised. <laughs> Paul said they just need to have faith in Jesus. Believe in God, repent, and have faith that Jesus is the Son of God. The simplicity that in, in Christ. The kingdom of heaven is for Israel. It's not for everybody else in the whole wide world. Verse 4, For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. So he's letting them know, if somebody come to you preaching another Jesus, it ain't but one Jesus. <laughs> and that's the Jesus who is a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Judah. He came for his people, he died for his people, and he's coming back for his people. There ain't no spiritual Jews. You either of the bloodline of Jews or Hebrew Israelites, or you're not. And it's not just because you're Hebrew Israelites, you gotta have faith in Jesus. That's what makes you an Israelite. People take the scripture out of context all Israel is not Israel. They don't know what they're talking about. It's because of faith. That's what makes you Israel. Just because you're Israel, you're not getting into the kingdom of heaven if you do not accept and believe that Jesus is the Son of God, the Savior of Israel. And he died on the cross, and he was buried, and he was raised on the third day. That's how you get into the kingdom of heaven. But it's just for Israel. But... The Japhet Gentiles want to say it's for everybody, it's for Christians. Jesus didn't come to start a religion. He didn't come to start a uh, Christianity. He's not coming back for Christians. He's coming back for his people. 
And so that's another Jesus that people are preaching. That's why Jesus said, many going to come in my name and deceive many. Christ is a form of the name, I mean, Christianity is a form of the name of Christ. And Jesus didn't come to start Christianity. He only came to save his people from their sin. He is the Holy One of Israel. <laughs> so if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Don't do it, because it's only one Jesus. He's the God of Israel. <laughs> That's what the scripture says. He, said, he never said he's the God of Christianity. <laughs> but your four, 501c3 corporation, the Antichrist church system, all your pastors, preachers, and teachers, they'll tell you, oh, he's the God of everybody in the whole world. He's only the God of Israel. Verse 5. For I suppose I was not a whit behind the very chiefest of the apostles. So Paul is saying, I'm, I'm, I'm not that far behind the very chiefs of all the apostles. I'm an apostle just like every one of them. Verse 6. But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. So Paul letting them know, yeah, sometimes my speech is, is, is rough, it's hard, it's rude. <laughs> but not in knowledge. I know exactly what I'm talking about and I have to be like this because I don't want you to be deceived. And see, that's the thing. People are deceived and they don't know that they're deceived. That's pretty bad. <laughs> you deceived and you don't know you deceived. And so a lot of people, especially so-called Christians, they don't know the word as good as they think they know it. They think Jesus came to start a religion called Christianity. Jesus did not come to start a religion called Christianity. You need to reread, restudy, and research the scriptures. Because you're taking them out of context. Verse 7. Have I committed an offense in abasing myself that ye might be exalted because I have preached to you the gospel of God freely? He said, look, I'm not charging you <laughs> for preaching the gospel unto you. I'm, I'm abasing myself. I'm doing this because I have to. I'm, I'm commanded of God to do this. Have I committed an offense in abasing myself that you might be exalted because I preached the gospel, preached unto you the gospel of God freely? I'm doing this for free. There are people charging for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You got to pay them. <laughs> and they preaching false doctrine. You're paying them for false doctrine. <laughs> Verse 8. I robbed other churches, taking wages of them to do you service. <laughs> he said... Other churches, they was willing to pay me, and I took the, the money that they was willing to pay me to, to preach unto you. Verse 9, And when I was present with you, I wanted, and I was chargeable to no man. For that which was lacking to me, the brethren which came from Macedonia supplied, and in all things I have kept myself from being burdensome unto you, and so will I keep myself. Like, when I came to you, I preached the gospel unto you. If I had any needs or any wants, the brothers of Macedonia, they covered all that, I, they supplied all that I wanted. I didn't have to ask you for anything. I didn't want to be a burden unto you. Verse 10, as the truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of Achaia. He said, I'm going to keep uh, telling everybody how Achaia is just bubbling over with enthusiasm and a zeal for Christ and for the word of God. He said, nobody's going to stop me from boasting about that region. Verse 11, wherefore, because I love you not, God know it. He said, I, what, you think I don't love you? <laughs> I do love you. God knows that I love you. Verse 12, 
But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. So he's saying, look, everything that I'm doing, I'm doing for you. Uh, he said, that I may cut off occasion from them that desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. He's not, he said, I'm, I'm, I'm boasting about you, to you. <laughs> you are my work in the Lord, and so what I do is, is, is unto the Lord because of you. Verse 13, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. He said, other people, they're not sincere in, in their preaching unto you. They're using you for merchandise. They're deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of, of Christ. they just using you, taking your money, <laughs> taking advantage of you. They're false apostles. Verse 14, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. All these 501c3 corporations, anti-Christ church system, are false apostles, false preachers and teachers, and pastors. They're transformed into uh, ministers of, of righteousness. Verse 15, therefore, it is no great thing that if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, who then shall be according to their work. So Satan is transformed into an angel of light, and his ministers are transformed into ministers of righteousness. But they're deceitful. But people are following them. The, the, these churches on Sunday morning are packed, especially these, these fake ministry preachers telling you you're going to be rich. It's your season. <laughs> people love to hear that, but they're being deceived. They're just taking it all in. Shalom, shalom. I see you, brother. They're, they're being deceived by all these fake preachers of, of Satan. Verse 16, I say again, let no man think me a fool, if otherwise, yet as a fool receive me, that I may boast myself a little. <laughs> Y'all may think I'm crazy. You may think I'm a fool. But I'm a fool for Christ. Verse 17. That which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as if, as if it were foolishly in this confidence of boasting. <laughs> he said, y'all think I'm crazy, but I'm doing everything I can possibly do to ensure your salvation. And so I'm going to boast about you. I'm going to tell everybody that you're following the Lord. Y'all may think I'm foolish, but I'm confident in what I'm boasting about. Verse 18, seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. He's like, I don't care what I have to go through. <laughs> Whatever I got to go through, I'm going to go through. That's my glory. Verse 19, for ye suffer fools gladly, seeing you yourselves are wise. All these fake preachers that come through here, you suffer them. So, suffer me for a little while. Verse 20. For ye suffer if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. Y'all allow all that. You allow them to take your money. To abuse you every Sunday, making you give your tithes and offering and all this stuff. That's not what it's for. But y'all allow that. I, Paul said, I haven't asked you for a dime, and I will not ask you for a dime. Verse 21, I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak. How be it, when, at, when, wherein soever... Any is bold, I speak foolishly. I am bold also. Y'all may think I'm weak. <laughs> I ain't weak. But if they want to act a fool, I can act a fool also. Verse 22. Are they Hebrews? So am I. 
Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they of the seed of Abraham? So am I. So it's interesting that Paul brings out this point. It's because he's speaking to Hebrew Israelites. He didn't say nothing about Christians or Christianity. He said, are they Hebrews? Yes, they are. He said, so am I. Are they Israelites? They Israelites? So am I. I'm an Israelite. Are they of the seed of Abraham? Yes, they are. Well, I'm of the seed of Abraham also. That's who the gospel of the kingdom of God is for. It's for Israel. Nothing has changed from Genesis to Revelation. It's about Israel. Jesus died for Israel, and he's coming back for Israel. For Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham. That's who, he, who he's coming back for. Jesus himself is a Hebrew Israelite of the seed of Abraham. He didn't come to start a religion. He didn't come to start Christianity. Verse 23. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prison more frequent, in deaths often. He said, are they ministers of Christ? He said, I'm speaking as a fool. I'm, I'm more of, uh, of a minister of Christ than all of them. I, I labor more. I've had more stripes. I've been in prison more and in deaths often, threatened, of my, threatened for my life. Verse 24 of the Jews, five times received thy forty stripes, save one. My own people, Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, of the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin, called Jews, they, they beat me with forty stripes. <laughs> My own people. Verse 25, thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned, thrice I was suffered shipwreck, and a night and a day I have been in the deep. <laughs> he said, this is what I've been through for the sake of the gospel to bring the gospel unto you. I've been beaten with rods, I've been stoned, I've been beaten with rods three times, I've been stoned once, <laughs> I suffered shipwreck three times, I spent a night and a day in the deep. <laughs> Verse 46, in journeyings often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, and in perils among false brethren. <laughs> he said, y'all just don't know what I've been through just to preach the gospel of the kingdom of heaven unto you. Throughout all my journeys, the waters, the, 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 you know, taking the boats and ships here and there. I've been in perils. People robbing me. <laughs> Whatever little money I got, they taking it from me. Perils in my countrymen, my own Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Judah, the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. Take advantage of me. Pearls with the heathen, the northern kingdom of the ten tribes that are scattered among the Gentiles. They take advantage of me in the city, in the wilderness, in the sea, among false brethren, people that say they believe, that say they follow in Christ. They take advantage of me. I will allow it. I turn the other cheek and I just keep praising the Lord. <laughs> this is what I've been through just to preach the kingdom of heaven unto you. Verse 27, in weariness, in painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness. I've given my whole life, everything that I am, my whole being, whatever it takes, I didn't care. If I was starving, if I was hungry, if I was naked, I gave myself for the kingdom of heaven. Verse 28, beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. <laughs> he said, and I still care for all the churches wherever I preach. And, and it doesn't matter if I don't have what I need just for the daily necessities. I still got to do what I do for all the churches. I got to still work. 
I can't just give up and stop just because my needs, the necessity of my needs aren't being met. I don't have food. I'm hungry. I still got to go preach and teach. Verse 29, who is weak? Am I not weak? Who is offended? Am I not burned? Like, whatever y'all go through, I've been through. Whatever y'all have suffered, I have suffered. Verse 30, if I must need glory, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmities. Because I know what I've been through, and I'm still going through. But that doesn't matter. My life is not my own. I've been bought with a price. I belong to the Lord. So even the breath of life that I breathe, I breathe because of the Lord. I breathe to serve him. He put the breath of life in me, so I use the breath of life to preach the word of God. <laughs> You're like, my life is not my own. I'm a servant. I'm a, I'm a slave to Jesus. Verse 31, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. Either everything that I'm telling you is the gospel truth. <laughs> the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, he know that I am not lying. Everything that I've been through, I, I go through. And I've been through for you, for the hope of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for the hope of the kingdom of heaven. That's what I do. That's why I do it. <laughs> and I'm going to do it till I'm dead. Verse 32 in Damascus, the governor under Artus, the king, kept the city of the Damascians with the garrison desirous to apprehend me. He said, when I was in Damascus, I was afraid for my life. They were seeking me to apprehend me. Verse 33, and through a window in a basket was I let down by the wall and escaped his hands. He said, I had to run. And escape him for my life. They was going to kill me. And that's how it was for Paul. Throughout his ministry. He eventually. Ended up in prison. In the Roman jail. But. It was prophesied that was going to happen. But you got to understand. Brothers and sisters. That this life that we live for Christ. Is not our life. And so we got to glorify Christ. In our earthly bodies. We got to die daily. We got to be willing to literally give up this life, lay it down if necessary. If somebody threatening to kill us, as long as we're preaching the gospel, that's all we're supposed to be doing. And so we shouldn't be worried or afraid. God is not giving us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. Thank you for listening. See you next time. Shalom.